if we can take public dollars and send tons of money to Ukraine, which was just brought out in CBS News, how it's not just money for tanks and missiles and ammo to Ukrainian to the Ukrainian military, but it's also grain and healthcare and all these things you're helping Ukraine out with. But yet we can't do the same thing. We cannot help rebuild Lahaina. And please don't come at me with, well, we don't have the money for it. Yes, we do. Ukraine got it. What happened in 2021 where they dumped $4 trillion into the stock market to prop up the markets? You don't think we can't do that for Lahaina? We're about to get into this. Regarding what's happened in Maui, and a lot of the comrades have also talked about this right now uh, in the last few weeks, but this is getting even worse in regards to what happened in Lahaina in particularly. Uh, so these, issue, these issues in Lahaina keep going from bad to worse. The burning of their town and pricing them out seems like an intended consequence to take over the former Kingdom of Hawaii capital to put it into greedy corporate and wealthy land loan, landowners' hands. So I'm going to share this article and we will get into it. So let's go here to this. It says Hawaii economists say Lahaina locals could be priced out of rebuilding town without zoning changes. That's right. Gentrification going on. It says, it says residents who survived the wildfire that leveled the Hawaii town of Lahaina might not be able to afford to live there after it's rebuilt unless officials alter zoning laws and make other changes, economists warned on Friday. The risk is very real. That was from Carl Bonham, executive director of University of Hawaii Economic Research Organization. Says soaring housing prices have already forced many native Hawaiians and other longtime Hawaii residents to leave the islands and to move to US mainland. The wildfire that claimed at least 97 lives and destroyed 2,200 buildings in West Maui community of Lahaina, 86% which were residential amplifies the problem for survivors. Nearly 8,000 of them have been placed at 40 hotels or other accommodations around the island of Maui. So really it is when it rains, it pours. It says market prices for the new housing are likely to far exceed the already high prices that existed in Lahaina before the fire. For renters, the old housing stock that was destroyed provided opportunities for reasonable rents. So this is from the economic report. So prices are already out of out of sight. They are insane right now. So I'm going to share with you guys the rent prices. So that's go that has happened. Well, that is really, uh, shows you how bad it is in places like Lahaina. Hawaii is literally one of the top states in regards to rent prices. So I'm going to share this with you guys. So this is out from out of reach. Let me enlarge this just a little bit. Oh, uh, did I go a little too far? Yeah, okay. So this is Hawaii. This is the number two most highest state for rent prices. It says in Hawaii, the fair market rent for a two bedroom apartment is $2,175. 
in order to afford this level of rents and utilities without paying more than 30% of income on housing, a household must earn $7,251 monthly or $87,013 annually. Assuming a 40 hour work week, 52 weeks per year, this level of income translates to an hourly housing wage of $41.83 an hour just to afford a two bedroom. So you have to work 139 work hours per week at minimum wage to afford a two bedroom house or home in Hawaii or 107 hours per week to afford a one bedroom. But the minimum wage in Hawaii is $12 an hour. So, and the average winter wage is about half of what you need in order to survive. Look, let me shrink this just a little so you guys can see everything. And Honolulu is one of the most expensive areas at $43.21 per hour. Kauai County at $41.31. Kahuli, uh, Wailuku, Lahaina is $38.19. So Lahaina is one of the most expensive areas in Hawaii to afford. And this is why they are being priced out as we speak. Because now that their properties burned down, where can they go? Now you have these vultures coming in and saying, heard your house got burned down. You know, you know how that, how, how does that, how, how that has to make you feel? It's crazy. So I'm going to share this video here because it's wild how a lot of people are being priced out of this area and how many people It started playing before I no stop playing. Go back. Okay. Let me share this video. And it's entitled Lahaina is not for sale. So this gives you on the ground of what's going on. The residents are using social media to warn each other about realtors attempting to buy land from wildfire victims. Investors and realtors calling the families who lost their home, offering to buy their land. How dare you? Over 4,500 people in Maui were displaced by the fires. But the island, just like the rest of the state, has been facing a housing crisis for years. This is in large part due to people buying vacation homes and rental properties, pricing Native Hawaiians and local-born residents out of many areas. Earlier this week, Hawaii's Democratic Governor Josh Green discussed the attempts made by realtors to buy land from victims and suggested a pause on sales of properties that were affected by the fires. I've actually reached out to our Attorney General to explore options to do a, a moratorium on any sales of properties that have been uh, damaged or destroyed. It's going to be a very long time before any growth or housing can be built, and so you will be pretty poorly informed you try to steal land from our people. Last week's wildfire killed at least 111 people and officials have said that more than 1,000 people are still unaccounted for. Over 2,200 structures were also destroyed or damaged, leaving thousands displaced. Move away, we, we've already been displaced so much. Let investors and sharks and realtors across the world know that Lahaina Wild. But wait, there's more. So let me go. 
back to the article. This is just class warfare by the wealthy. They see that these poor residents who home got burned down are as desperate. So they will flash some cash, which is insignificant in the grand scheme of things, and expect the residents to see out the desperation, to sell out of desperation and duress. So this is a sick and twisted thing that's happening. The moment that they sell, the residents won't have the money to be able to afford to live in Lahaina even though they've been there for generations, imperialism and colonialism hasn't stopped in Hawaii. So let me share this part of the article as well. Make sure I get to the part that I need. Okay. It says Bonham said policy changes and a concerted effort are needed to prevent a rebuilt Lahaina from becoming a haven exclusively for the wealthy. For the example, by changing zoning to allow some smaller and more affordable housing units like duplexes and apartments. Quote, we need to be seriously focusing on multifamily housing. That's the way you get housing that isn't million dollar plus homes. You've got to have more density. Currently, only about 1% of the land in Lahaina's burned area is zoned for multifamily housing. The new economic report said that the post-disaster plunge in tourism to Maui has hit the island's economy and people hard. Officials initially told prospective tourists to stay away from Maui. Visitors' arrival dropped by nearly three quarters, the report said. In the weeks after the fire, Maui lost more than $13 million per day in visitor spending with businesses lacking customers, layoffs resulted. So people are actually being laid off. This paragraph proves why local politics is so important as well as zoning laws that can favor people and workers, environmentally safety and efficient infrastructure. Otherwise the rich will just grab whatever they want and use zoning laws to limit the bottom 99%. This is also why central planning model is necessary and is approved by the people and not by the rich landowners and landlords. So this is why when natural disasters like this happen, public money should be poured into areas like this so that people can survive off of a stipend and, they, and the money should be used as a tool to rebuild. Tourism, in my opinion, should stop. So at least 65% of the rebuilding is done so that people won't visit and get in the way. If the federal government took part of that $24 billion that was sent to Ukraine and put 10% of it into Lahaina, they could rebuild fast and take, take care of the people through Medicare for all and fund reconstruction of homes and businesses. But they don't want to <laughs> because of capitalism. If you think about it, just take that money, put it in the hands of the people, get construction crews into Lahaina, and rebuild the housing. Wait, JB, just give the money to them so that they can rebuild the house? Yes. I don't care if they had housing. I don't care if they had home insurance or not. I don't care if they have fire insurance or not. The entire town is burnt down. If we can, if we can, let me get this down. If we can take public dollars and send tons of money to Ukraine, which was just brought out in CBS News, how it's not just money for tanks and missiles and ammo to Ukrainian, to the Ukrainian military, but it's also grain and healthcare and all these things they're helping Ukraine out with. But yet we can't do the same thing. We cannot help rebuild Lahaina. And please don't come at me with, well, we don't have the money for it. Yes, we do. Ukraine got it. 
What happened in 2021 where they dumped $4 trillion into the stock market to prop up the markets? You don't think we can't do that for Lahaina? Just rebuild the homes and businesses that were burnt down? We could do it. We could definitely do it. We don't need to have the businesses operate. We could subsidize. We literally could afford to subsidize the businesses in those areas so that they can stay afloat. And the people who are employed, because the businesses are burned down, well, we can keep them with their paychecks coming and then use those same public dollars to rebuild the home. Okay, what was the square footage of your home? How much was your, did your home cost? Okay, this is how much it will take cost to clear the area and rebuild the home. All right, for each person in that area, how much will it cost? Okay, this many billion? Okay, fine. Rebuild it, subsidize the businesses. Okay, you're a business owner. How, how much does it cost for your business? How much does it cost for that building? All right. We will pay the cost to rebuild it. How much all the supplies in your build of, of your business cost? Okay, that's how much in supplies as well as stock that you had in your store. Okay, we'll pay for all that. Then rebuild it all. Start them back from where they were from when the fire started. Give them all single payer health care. Make sure all the people on the Hina are taken care of, right? Because you have health issues from having that much fire around you. Some people may have gotten burned. Some people may have smoke inhalation. Some people, uh, you know, had to stay in that water, may have gotten hypothermia from being in water for that long. What have you. All this could be done. And here's the thing. I'm not that brilliant. I'm not that smart. And even I think of all this stuff. Imagine what they could think of. They could take the Army Corps of Engineers, come in there, and rebuild Lahaina. And then say, look, Lahaina's closed until further notice. No. No tourists. And people who conduct tours, guess what? You'll be subsidized in the meantime. We'll give you we'll, 80% of what you guys were making, right? We'll subsidize you until Lahaina is 65% built. Once it's 65% built, then we'll reopen. But we don't want tourists getting in the way. No, no new tourists, no new people can move in. No, sorry, Lahaina's closed. And they could do that. But somehow, some way, it's like, well, no, we gotta put capitalism first. So, now, guess what? That same waters where people died in trying to flee the fires, well, they're going to allow them to be able to do tours and go snorkeling. They're going to get in the way of their construction. It is wicked and wild how they allow this to happen. And then you have these real estate investors, a.k.a. vultures, coming in trying to buy it up just so that they can gentrify the town of Lahaina. It's sad. It's crazy. So why in the world, no wonder why Native Hawaiians are like, don't come. Native Hawaiians are still fighting imperialism and colonialism. Even though Hawaii is considered a state now, they're still fighting colonialism and imperialism. Because these vultures still keep trying to take hold of that part of Hawaii and wanting to price the people out. People wonder why we say land back. Because people are sick and tired of having their ancestral land taken away and stolen. I think this is egregious. 
they can do so much better than this. Says the U.S. Department of Labor extended the application filing for deadline disaster unemployment insurance by one month to October 16th. Hawaii's Department of Labor and Industrial Relations announced on Friday. Individuals that do not qualify for regular unemployment insurance may be eligible for DUA benefits. But why should they have to apply, though? Why not just cover all the residents? Because even if your house survived the fi survived the fire, doesn't mean your job did. It doesn't make sense. But when has ever a government that's being well that's being dominated by capitalists ever made sense? Mm -hmm. Just doesn't. Let us go to the chat. Frank Johnson, thank you so much for the super chat. It says, how can they get away with that? Because the government allows them to, because the government's their lackey. Government is like a hammer. It could be used to build or it could be used to destroy. A lot of times when you, actually all the time, when government is in the hand of a capitalist, in the hands of a billionaire, it's used to destroy. It destroys the workers. It destroys the environment. That's what happens because they will use government in that way. They will wield government like a hammer to smash the environment, and workers to pieces versus when government or that hammer is in the hands of the workers, we built with it. We built things that will last us. We build things that will help us to not only survive, but to thrive in the system. That's the point. But if you build to survive and thrive, that means that there's equality, equity, and justice that is taking place. Equality, equity, and justice are not profitable to the owner class because that means that they have less, which means if the workers have more, that's a problem for them. That's why the system needs to be changed from the ground up. So yeah, that's how they're able to get away with that. But thank you very much, Frank Johnson. <laughs> 